Okay guys, hey, how are you? Episode 57, and as promised, this is going to be the tactics video. So what we're basically going to discuss is the tactical approach that we took last season that led us to the Europa League. Touch on a small amount of details as to how it works and what the inspiration behind it is. And then we'll go into more detail about how I managed to turn our poor away form uh, around away from home obviously and the tweaks that we do tactically to fix playing away from home and uh, last but not least both a home and away tactic will be in the description for you to download just in case you know you want to plug and play it yourself but here we go then so it's not going to be one of them really long tactical videos like I normally do when trying to like recreate Mourinho or someone but the inspiration behind this tactical approach really is kind of kind of a mixture of approaches. Mainly the way Zinedine Zidane's team play uh, at Real Madrid, but also taking inspiration from how Jose Mourinho's Chelsea played during his first spell. And you can tell that from the formation really. So the idea is you've got your back four, you've got an anchor man or a playmaker that sits in front of the back four, two centre mids and three forwards. Now the first thing that probably stands out is, well, it's strikerless uh, and it's incredibly narrow because normally when you go with this kind of approach you have a striker and you'll have wingers here and have the good old fashioned football manager famous V-shape in midfield. Now this year I found that strikerless formations work really, really well. Now for me, an ongoing issue in football manager uh, which has been an issue for years is that strikers don't contribute enough off the ball given how a lot of strikers play in modern day football when they are put in a striker role in football manager and the most negative or the most defensive striker role position in the game is the defensive forward on defend I think it is and you still get a lot more closing down from a shadow striker a lot more defensive work from a shadow striker, a lot more goals as well, believe it or not, and, and assists from a shadow striker in the game than you do with a defensive forward. Now for me, the way a shadow striker plays is probably how a deep line forward or defensive forward should really play in terms of the match engine, in terms of how they come back and help the midfield, in terms of how they drop deep, in terms of you know, how they play almost feels like to me at times personally that there isn't that much difference between a poacher and a dance forward or, or basically any other role that belongs to a striker in the game. Another reason as well is that it allows you to basically flood the midfield. So imagine we're playing against opponents and you probably notice this watching the series so far that because we play strikerless a lot of the time normally strikers will try and be in line with the opposition's back four when you play with three attacking midfielders, most of the time they'll sit in the space between the opposition back four and the opposition's midfield, which gives them a lot more space to pick up the ball and run at the opposition defence. The reason why our centre mids are on support is because when one of these guys gets the ball, no, it's easier to give them the ball because they're closer to the midfield, these guys can then bomb forward as well. And... Let's say Lucas Moura has a ball, whether it's down the wing or, you know, somewhere around this area on the pitch, going towards the opposition's goal, and these guys start bombing forward. Before you know it, you've got so many people making runs forward, the opposition back four, or back three, or back five can't pick everyone up. And if they were playing strikers instead, it would be more difficult to transition between defence into attack because they'd be playing higher up the park, close to the opposition defenders, and it would be a lot more difficult to give them the ball, try and quickly turn defence into attack. And really, the way we play is with quite a high emphasis on counter-attacking. So, back four, pretty standard. DLP, pretty standard. I've explained why these guys are really on support. The reason why our DLP is on defence is because he just gives a little bit more stability to the centre backs. A lot of the time he'll drop deep and pick up the ball and spray passes forward, kind of like a Perlo esque style of playmaker or Chavi style of playmaker. And uh, these guys, their roles are pretty self explanatory. It's kind of why I like these three to be pacey 
because when they make the runs past the defenders from deep, they're so pacey that they become incredibly difficult to pick up. And of course, if you want to play on the counter-attack, it's advantageous to have fast players as well. And these guys are on support because they really should aim to get involved with the front three. Team instruction-wise, we play with a counter mentality. Now, the reason for the counter mentality is a lot of people incorrectly, in my opinion, go down the route of if you're a stronger side, you should play with a more adventurous mentality, which against some opposition works pretty well. But when you become a better side, and it could be something we end up suffering from going into this next season, is that your rep increases. And the way the match engine works is the higher your reputation, the more negative it will play against you. So when we first came into the league, we played 4-4-2 on an attacking mentality. We're willing to concede goals, but we often used to score a lot of early goals in halves and play with quite a high tempo and were relatively adventurous. And uh, the reason why that worked well, you know, trying to play on the front foot, was we had weak players, but we had players who all served a specific purpose in a specific system. When you've recently gotten promoted to the Premier League, because your reputation ain't that high, the match engine will play quite attacking against you as well, which means your opposition will basically be trying to win, which means their fullbacks will be getting forward, they'll leave more gaps at the back, and... Obviously, if you play your cards right and your system's good, you can take advantage of that. And obviously, we used to tweak a lot, and uh, I'd consider that one of the main reasons why we did so well. Now that we're a Europa Champions League side, most of the teams in the league come up against us playing on the counter or defensively. So they see you as a really strong side. They know you're going to be wanting to rush for the win, they know you're going to be wanting to score goals, they know you've got the better players, so instead they'll look to soak up pressure and try and hit you on the counter when you throw a lot of men forward. And by playing with the counter mentality, you're almost even in that out. You're not over committing, and if you do want to start committing more players forward, that's something we always do as the game progresses. Which is why I like to start off on a counter mentality, if we do end up reaching the 60th, 65th minute, and you have to change the game and instructions, and up to attacking, let's say if you're a goal down or it's still nil-nil, it's a game you need to win, then for sure make them changes. But I think for most people that have watched my series up until this point, I think it'll be pretty clear how, even though when you download this tactic, you'll have these instructions here, how I change them around a lot, depending on, on opposition, depending on how a game's going. But that explains, hopefully, why we kind of start off with a counter mentality at home. Tempo, higher. We've got some very fast players. It suits trying to play on the counter-attack as well. Now, we don't aim to play on the counter-attack. We aim to just play football. But because of the fast players we have, when we play with a higher tempo, because of the way we're set up in the 4-3-3, naturally, we'll end up being very good in transitioning from defence to attack because of how we're set up. So a higher tempo definitely helps make that as efficient as possible. Width-wise, it's kind of a narrow formation. So I've gone with the fairly narrow width. Now, the fairly narrow width works pretty well. Um, I find that watching the team, they aren't too narrow and they're not too wide. They're narrow enough to be able to play nice, short, intricate passes together and keep a lot of possession. Um, but against some opposition, depending... If you come up against opponents that are themselves playing very, very wide, um, it then becomes a problem for you to play very, very narrow because they have a lot of space on the wings to try and counterattack you from. So, again, width is something that I think you do, going into different games, have to tweak. Uh, defensive line, normal, simply because we don't exactly have the fastest back four. And uh, generally speaking, this will change depending on who we're playing against. If we're up against like a West Brom that have two really pacey strikers, it makes sense to play this way. If we're up against a team with a very slow, lone striker, then we can probably afford to play with a slightly higher defensive line and try and aim to use the offside trap. The reason why that works well is because the higher defensive line you play, the better possession you can keep because the closer you're back for our team midfield. So the easier it really becomes to, you know, play passes backwards and forth between the two. Closing down more, again, I feel like the shape suits wanting to close down more. And again, you think about Gigan pressing. We don't really aim to 
close down anywhere near as aggressive as that. But when you do have pace in your side, when you do want to still be effective from the counter, it works well to close down and tightly mark your opponents. And when you click use tighter marking, doesn't actually mean man marking all over the pitch. It just means that where possible, your players will look to be closer to opposition players uh, when they're off the ball. And if your players aim to be as close as possible to opposition players when off the ball, then it increases the chances that a tackle is going to come flying in. Passing directness is something I change all the time. I like to start things off on shorter passing sometimes I go with mixed and retained possession it really depends on the opposition you're playing against depends on how what your possession stats are looking like if you got if you've got a lot of possession but you're kind of struggling to score goals or you know you're playing against a team with a high line it might make more sense to even go mixed to play more direct balls forward see a fast front three Pass into space, no brainer for counter attacking football exploit the middle play out of defense nothing new there I'm not looking for the overlap which is something we do away from home, which we'll talk about in a bit. But at home, we look to work the ball into the box. And that's kind of one of the reasons why our approach works so well. Because once we get the ball in the final third, we know we've got the quality in the final third. If it's not a direct counter-attacking opportunity, the players will look to work the ball into the box. The centre mids will start pushing up, making runs into the box. And eventually, you end up with so many players making them deep runs into the box, whether it's the attacking midfielders or the centre mids, that it becomes rather easy to work the ball into the box. And if you can shoot, nine times out of ten from inside the box, get a clear shot on goal, you're probably going to hit the back of the net. Dribble in, dribble less. Uh, not really too big of a deal, to be honest. Um, it's mainly just to try and increase possession stats, especially when you've got two adventurous centre midfielders like us on support just find that sometimes depending on personnel particularly your centre midfielders you don't want them to try and get too ad adventurous and try and dribble too much and pretend they're messy because they end up losing the ball in midfield and it m then makes life easier for your opponents to then capitalise and counter-attack from and freedom of movement wise roam from positions and I just feel like at this current moment in time it's a good instruction given how good our squad really was last season and when you've got good players really tactics don't become that relevant anymore it's more about you trying to play to the strengths of your players and try try to get the best out of them really and when you've got creative players like we do I think rowing from positions really suits them and given as well the fact that it's a tactic that is based on a lot of creative players be it the front three or the two centre midfielders Again, you want to allow them to roam from position. They'll have good off-the-ball mental attributes and stuff where they'll aim to move into channels and make things happen. And, yeah, you just basically don't want them kinds of players on a leash. You want to leave them to do what they naturally do and grab you assists. And last but not least, if there's anything else I'm going to really discuss, it's going to be the fact that we use IWBs at home. I find the IWBs, because they don't really prioritise pushing forwards it doesn't leave that gap behind them that your opposition are going to be coming to Ewood Park to try and counter attack you with uh, so that works well as well and you get the right balance because you're at home you don't have to worry too much about getting these guys bombing forward because you've got enough attacking quality in the side it's only really something you'd switch on if again you're chasing a goal and when these guys start really coming narrow it also helps Fill in the gap that these two centre midfielders will leave when they also try to push forward as well. So it's kind of intelligent in terms of being a fluid system. So that's something that works really well uh, as well and helps you really just retain possession. Now, so when we go away from home, the main changes we do is we change team instructions to standard. We turn on look for overlap. We get rid of these two instructions. Sometimes we'll go mixed retain possession. You see how like changing to standard automatically makes us a little bit more wider and we also end up changing our IWBs to fullbacks on automatic and the reason why I like automatic automatic by default on standard is basically support but if we do end up going attacking it changes them automatically to attacking I like it because it just means I have to click less right when we're away from home we have to kind of concede that we're not going to get as much possession as we normally get and you might think, well, you're going away from home and you're playing a bit more positive than you do at home. And that's right, because when you are away from home, uh, opposition teams are going to suddenly be a higher standard than they are when they come to your place. And when you've got a good team, good players like we do, 
you can't afford to sit back and play away from home on the counter against them away from home. It's fine at home because you have a lot more advantages being at home and the crowd behind you and so on, which gets that extra bit of oomph out of you, which makes everything all right in the end, where you want to retain possession, where you know your opposition are going to be playing on the counter themselves. When you go to a team like West Brom or whatever at home, they're not always necessarily going to be looking to play on the counter. They know they're at home. They know it's a good opportunity for them to win. So you don't want to turn into them, if that makes any sense, when you go to their place, when you've got a team as strong as ours, which is why we play more positively and just tell the lads, look, you're good players. Go out there and get the job done. We don't use IWBs. Like I said, they become fullbacks simply because the extra bit of width away from home, I found, becomes really important. So it leaves us a little bit more vulnerable at the back. But because it's harder away from home, you kind of have that reliance on playing a little bit more positively because you need it out of your players, basically, because it is going to be tougher. And when you're a team that's gunning for the Champions League or Europa League like we are, you have to take risks away from home because when you go to a team like a Bournemouth or a West Brom and you know you need three points, it ain't going to be an easy game and you ain't going to win the game by trying to play counter-attacking against them and try and play like you're the underdog, which isn't the case at all. So that's just basically what I found fixed our away for, being a little bit more positive and just basically facing the fact that we have stronger players than the opposition. Go out there and play a little bit more positive. Go out there and you know use your better technical ability. Use a little bit more width than we do at home rather than trying to prioritise holding onto the ball because we know a goal will come at home because we've got the crowd behind us. We're going to have to work hard for it. And part of working hard for it is by trying to grab that goal, by trying to play on the front foot. But that's it really in terms of tactical. Um, we can sit and look at player instructions, but I think really this episode has gone on long enough. There isn't really anything that's uh, too mind-blowing in terms of the instructions. It is what it is. It's a very simple system. And if I were to compare this system with the 4 4 2 we used to finish second in the championship in our first season and you know, the, the tactic we used in our first two seasons in the Premier League, I'd say the 4 4 2, the kind of uh, Pellegrini, Pellegrini-esque 4 4 2 was a much more complex tactic. Uh, as well, another thing worth mentioning is these guys do man mark any opposition wide players as well. And I have a video on man marking, which I'll also link in the description. But that's it, really. I think a large part of my success this season with Blackburn winning the Europa League hasn't necessarily been the tactic. It's been the players that we've signed and fitting the players that we've signed, not just into the tactical approach I knew I wanted to make, but also fitting them into the tactical approach, be it given the fact that this is a relatively new tactical approach that you know I was tweaking throughout the season. But when you have better players, when you have stronger players, that's why football manager becomes easier when you manage Man United, right? Um, you can afford to make more tactical mistakes. You can afford to play with the same tactic throughout an entire game because you know on the pitch your players are just better. And in a way, that's one of the things I don't like about Football Manager. In a way, once you get better players, the game does kind of become a lot easier than when you're managing a team in the conference and you're up against teams that sit back and defend and just hoof the ball up front and somehow nick a 1-0 winner. You know, it's a complete different style of football. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if there are any questions, let me know. Uh, I don't want to make it too long. And uh, I'd like to think that by now, if you follow this, the series, you'll have a rough idea of how the approach plays football. It's good old-fashioned counter-attacking 4-3-3 with emphasis on also keeping the ball when we can. And uh, a large part of that, again, is down to the fact that we have good players and we play the right players in the right roles and aim really to get the best out of them. I think Andre Gray really is a really good example of that. You know, Andre Gray, in terms of football manager, is kind of an average player, but if we take a quick look at his record, um, I've always managed to adapt what we're doing really to get the best out of him. 16 goals in his first season, 10 goals, 8 goals, but 11 assists last season. Um, but if we look here, 16 goals last season overall because we didn't take into account continental competitions and stuff like that. So again, it's something I always say, management is always about adapting to your players and aiming to get the best out of them and as well adapting to your opposition and tweaking during games. Sometimes you'll make tweaks where you go wrong. You know, I think I think last season 
we tweaked incorrectly quite a few times. Sometimes you get punished, sometimes you don't. It was like that game when we were 4 0 down or 3 0 down against CSK Moscow away from home and I had to change it to a narrow 4 1 2 1 2 and we ended up winning 4 3. And we were playing with this approach, really, when we were 3 0 down. Yeah, this is the same tactic that won me the Europa League and got me third in the Premier League. So is it the tactics fault? No, but you've got to be a dynamic, adaptive manager. Uh, and there's no guarantee that if you guys try and plug and play this, that it'll work for you. If you're, I don't know, Salford, uh, Salford City or someone like, off the top of my head, or a crap team like Burnley, you know what I mean? So I think that's going to be it in terms of, of, of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If this kind of video hasn't really been your cup of tea, fair enough, but a, a lot of people have kind of been asking for it and been wanting to you know, know more details about our tactical approach. Um, uh, and yeah, thanks for watching.